Hey, all right, so today we're going to go through five different ways of hooks, creating hooks, hooking your audience at the at the start, okay? So making them engage with your writing. Here's five different ways to do that. So you can begin with action. You can make the reader curious. You can use dialogue. You can use humour. And you can look at the moment of change. Okay, and you can... If you're navigating this um, PowerPoint on your own, you can click on these and it'll take you to each of those ones that you want to go to. Um, so why would you use a hook? Okay, how often do we judge things straight away? In a bookshop, you know, you might just use the, the blurb on the back. Have a look, they've got one paragraph to convince us to read that book or to buy that book. On Netflix, you know, you might give a TV show or a movie that you're choosing to watch about 20 seconds to convince us. After 20 seconds, you're like, nah, not that one, nah. You're like, oh, that looks all right, I'll watch it. Okay, so you're gonna hook your audience, no matter what you're doing. It's important to hook your audience, make them sound like you know where you're going and make sure that your audience reads on. Even in persuasive uh, texts, it's important to hook your audience to make sure that they're gonna go on that journey with you. Uh, and if you're navigating this at home, sorry, I'll just move me. You can click there to go back to that home page. Um, all right, so you want your audience to pay attention from the start. And these are the tools to, to grab your reader's attention, your audience's attention. Okay, so beginning with action, you get the reader involved by starting with some kind of event that's exciting. So rather than starting with an event like, oh, I was excited for my birthday party, party you can start with action i threw on my favorite red dress and scrambled down the stairs as fast as i could it was my eighth birthday and i couldn't wait for the party to begin all right so we can see the excitement we're starting with the action it's all frantic it's all exciting you're getting it across and people might be engaged by that they're going to want to read on all right different type of beginning with action so five four three two one the cameras were rolling and I was about to eat a cockroach. Okay, so we've got action there. They're, they're about to eat a cockroach. A bit disgusting, gross action, but it's going to link to our next one as well, which is make the reader curious. We'll talk more about this in a second. All right, so in this example from where are the billabongs? Well, you were the one who got the can opener. I said I was sorry, didn't I? How many times do I have to say it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so these guys are lost in the bush uh, and they have to meld together as a group to survive. All right, and if you click on the Angry Birds link, you can watch a video, watch um, Red from the start of Angry Birds. That's the start of the movie and he's literally just running through the village, uh, running through the, yeah, the jungle to deliver the egg. And he's sprinting and we're you know, carrying along and he's jumping and there's little obstacles for him to engage with. Or how to uh, train your dragon. You can see the village is under attack from dragons. So it's literally just, you know, chaos and warfare right from the start as they're bombarded by the dragons. So your turn. You're going to create a one to four sentence hook starting at the start of a story that begins with action. Okay. And if you want, you can use your typo again. Sorry, guys. Your journal task is the basis of your hook as you may want to write one for your journal article. And if you're looking for prompts, they begin on about slide 24. That might be out of date too. All right. Step number two, or, or technique number two, to make the to make the reader want to read on, to hook your audience, is to make the reader curious. So, for example, a minute ago I said five, four, three, two, one. The cameras were rolling, and I was about to eat a cockroach. I said that one links to this one, where you know you you're going to want to what happened next, or you're going to want to why something is happening. So a couple of ways you can make the reader curious. You can create interesting characters. Okay, so novel. Novel doesn't mean as in the book, but as in different or interesting. So we don't expect the villain to uh, be someone we can empathise with or, uh, or you know, sympathise with. Um, or that the shy pen pusher, just someone um, stuck behind a desk, is going to be the hero. Quirky people doing the unexpected can make us, make us curious. Unusual situations. Everyday people thrust into a you know a circumstances having to do unusual things or unexpected things like eating a cockroach okay these unprecedented we've heard that word a lot lately unprecedented it's never happened before unpredictable situations are the ones our, our brains know we're going to get something from okay so we're wondering we, you know we're thinking hmm, wonder what's happening here 
foreshadowing, leaving some clues about what might happen, hinting at something different from a character. Okay, so a character might tell someone uh, in the story something, and we know it's a lie. And we go, oh, he's just lied to that character. We expect something to come from that. Okay, it's going to make the curator curious what's going to happen from that. Or unusual details. Include something out of place that makes the reader curious, makes them wonder why it's there. For example, um, the beach house was great, but then my cousins arrived with the bacon, the bricks, and wearing the usual beanies. Okay, so we've got some nice alliteration there. Bacon, bricks, beanies. But there's one thing that stands out. Why do they have bricks? Okay, that's an unusual detail. Makes you wonder. Makes me curious. Makes me think. I'm going to read on. I'm going to find out why are they arriving with bacon, bricks, most of all, and their beanies. Um, Shadow Seeker. This is uh, an example here. You try delivering the a rat to the presenter of TV's biggest news program. I took a deep breath, marched across half a hectare of chrome and carpet and placed the brightly wrapped box right in the middle of the receptionist desk. Okay, and this is from the sequel to Dreamcatcher, The Shadow Seeker, where Tess and Green Gorilla Gang uh, fight to stop a toxic paper mill in their town, being built in their town. Okay, but we're wondering at this point, why? Okay, why are they delivering a rat? That's weird. Okay, it's going to make us curious. What's going to happen from this rat? What, you know, if that was the first thing I'd read in a book, I would probably read on just to find out what happens. Or you can watch this opening from the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, this is the first time you see him, so you don't know at this stage who this guy is. So you're wondering, who is this guy? Um, what's going to happen next? And then at the end, he's a captain without a ship. Okay, so there's lots of questions that come from that one. So your turn, you're going to make the reader curious. You're going to create a one to four sentence hook to start a story using novel characters. You're going to create interesting situations, foreshadowing, or an unusual detail. Um, now, if you want to use one from, I've used a typo again, because I've copied and pasted it. That's annoying. Uh, remember, if you want to use your general task as a basis of your hook, you may write one for it. Dialogue, okay? So this is the conversation between two or more people when they're talking to each other, okay? Comes from the Greek word, Dia, which means through, and leg legion. Okay, so they're speaking through, or it's what they're talking about. Characters are speaking to each other can be a good way to hook your audience. They they can't be talking about anything. There should be a conflict. Okay, that relates to your story or your or your theme. Okay, what the message is of your of your story or your narrative. It can't be enough to discuss two different viewpoints or expressing. It can be enough, sorry, to discuss two different viewpoints or express fear or concern about something. Okay, so here's some examples. It's just a rat, I said, breathing hard. Rats don't growl, said Mike. Okay, so we've got the dialogue there. Talking to each other. There's a bit of conflict. They're arguing. Nah, it's just a rat. No, it's not. Rats don't growl. But you can see that they're concerned about something. They're a bit worried. And it also creates that sense of curiosity because we wonder, well, if it's not a rat and it's growling, what is it going to be? The frogs, this is from an example from the frogs of Betts. Professor Betts, Professor Betts, Marcella, the new assistant called. The frogs have arrived. Okay, so we're going to, we see the excitement, the enthusiasm there. Or you can watch this little clip from uh, Lego Batman, or is it called Batman Lego? Batman Lego Movie, I think is what it's actually called. Anyway, you can see there on YouTube, just a couple of minutes, um, him talking and he's describing all the things that's happening okay and it links to one of our future ones because he, he talks and he describes everything and he tries to make him sound sound sophisticated and he it's just kind of funny okay so he's using humor which is our fourth technique we'll come to that in a second so just remember how to punctuate your dialogue uh you use Rule number one, use quotation marks and commas. So surround your dialogue with the quotation marks and end it with a comma before the last quote. So open your quotation marks, surround them, and end it with a comma if there's going to continue on. Open your quotation marks, end it with a comma, and close your quotation marks outside that comma. Okay? Now, that's easy for simple sentences. So always create a new paragraph line for new speakers. This is rule number two of punctuating dialogue. Um, this is my favourite dress, said Sally. It looks terrible on you, Mark. 
I said, Mark, that needs to be on a new line. Okay, they need to be separated. This is my favorite dress, said Mark. At said Sally, it looks terrible on you, said Mark. Okay, so here each part of the exchange has its own individual paragraph. That is correctly punctuated. And rule number three, put periods or full stops inside the quotation marks when you're not using dialogue tags, the speech marks, okay? So Mark walked across the room to the corner dresser. I swear I put your keys here. And that full stop is incorrectly punctuated. See, it's outside the, outside the quotation marks. So it should be Mark walked across the room to the corner dresser. I swear I put your keys here with the full stop inside the quotation marks, okay? Now, start with dialogue. This is your turn. You're going to create a four sentences of dialogue designed to hook your audience. Remember, if you want to use YAUE journal task as the basis of your hook, you may write it as one for you. Humor, all right? So sharing a laugh is a good way to bond with people, okay? Laughing about something, having a shared experience, making your audience laugh is a, is a good way to make them bond to your writing. So I've got a little TED Ed video here, and it's five minutes. It's about ways to make your writing funnier. Okay, so it talks about archetypal characters. Okay, so ways to use humor. You can use who, funny characters. The archetypes um, can help you build uh, funny characters. So we've got the know-it-all, the lovable loser, the bad boss, the neurotic, that's someone who's worried about everything, and the airhead, that's all in the video. Okay, or you can find the flaw. What's wrong with the character? What is gonna make them do they have like an anger issue? Are they too worried, too scared about something? Are they just inept, like they're not a good boss? Um, do they make mistakes all the time? Or are they too brainy that no one likes them? Okay, that's their flaw. That's what's going to hold them back, I guess. And you can exaggerate it. Or you can play with opposites. Okay? Um, and you can make those connections and then exaggerate them. Okay? So... Opposites, like we looked at earlier, this is where the pen pusher saves the day. Where was that? Yeah, the pen pusher could be the hero. Okay. Some examples. Ever cheered for your footy team with a pie in one hand and a drink in the other? Don't. When that final goal happened, I wore both. Okay, humor's not easy to write. That's not hilarious, but you get a vivid picture. It might make you read on. Hairy thoughts. If it rained for much longer, even the drugs would, ducks would drown. Okay, so we've got the exaggeration there. Um, here's some videos that are actually quite funny. We've got How to Train Your Dragon 2. Uh, it's five minutes. And the Lego Batman clip. Okay, so it's quite a, a good way. So create a one to four sentence hook to start using humor. Okay, and you can use it around your journal article. All right, the moment of change. All right. The moment of change is when something happens to your character which can't be undone. Harry Potter gets the admission to Hogwarts. From that moment, his life's never going to be the same. In Milan, the Emperor's advisor gives conscription papers out to each family. Okay? It means someone has to join the war. Uh, Milan's life is not going to be the same from that point. She's going to go off to war. She's not meant to, but she's going to go dressed as a man. In Shrek, Lord Farquaad sends all fairy tale creatures into exile. Um, and they end up living in Shrek's swamp. So that disrupts Shrek's life. If he doesn't make a change, his life is not going to be the same. Or another way to start at the change is the change at the end. What's the climax? What's the big event that happens in your character's life? And then go back in time. It's going to make us wonder, how do we get to this point? You know, all was going well on the hike until the heat wave happened. I was hot and sweaty and dying for a swim. Then I saw the river. And the sign, warning, crocodiles. Or this example from a chew. My dad's allergic to me. No joke. Well, no one in our house is laughing, that's for sure. That's a story about a boy whose father gets massive hay fever attacks every time his son walks into a room. And you can also watch the um, opening of Finding Nemo. All right? So Nemo's life is going to change when his mum is, is killed, basically. All right, create a one to four sentence hook and use it as your basis of change. All right, can they be more than one? Yep, of course, these are categories, but they're not rules. So the Lego Batman example, we've seen how it works in two. All right, here are some prompts. Go through these at your own pace and use them to guide your writing. Thanks guys.